Let's solve some electricity GCSE physics questions. These questions are suitable for all exam boards. Okay, so the first one, a student sets up the four arrangement using identical fixed resistors. Which of them has the lowest resistance? Okay, so in general, if you connect resistors in parallel, their resistance decreases. So in the case of A, those three resistors will only be equivalent to a third of the resistors which are just on its own. So let's say if this one here was one, then this one here would be a third for the entire combination. So because of that, A has the smallest resistance. Now, why are the other answers not true? Well, if they're connected in series, just in a straight line, just like that, using one continuous wire with no junctions, well, these ones here will have an equivalent resistance of one plus one plus one, which is three, which is significantly higher than a. We can extend the same logic for C, for instance, the total resistance would be, let's say, I don't know, two plus a half because those two are just connected in, um, in parallel. And then using the same type of thinking, D is also going to have a higher resistance than A. And that's why this is the correct answer. Okay, let's have a look at this one. A scientist sets up an electrical circuit. We have, we have it here. The lamp and the resistor each have a resistance of 5 ohms. So the total resistance in the circuit is 10 ohms. Calculate the current in the circuit when the switch is open. Okay, so when the switch is open, the circuit will be on with essentially this being a nice series circuit with a total resistance of 10 ohms. So we're going to use the fact that the current will be equal to the potential difference. I'm going to call that the PD, which will be then divided by the resistance. Um, also, we could write this symbolically as I being V divided by R. Okay, well, our voltage is 6.0 volts, and then we're going to be dividing this by 10 ohms, and that's going to give me a current which is equal to 6 divided by 10 is just 0.6 amps. Okay, next one, state the potential difference across the resistor when the switch is open. So if they have the same resistance, they will share the same amount of the potential difference. So if their resistance is exactly the same, which is 5 ohms, then each of them are going to share 3 volts so the potential difference across the resistor will be 3.0 volts. Okay, part B, the switch is now closed. Describe how the current through the resistor changes. So this is actually qu quite tricky. As soon as we close the switch, like so, the current, which uh, let's say will be going through here, positive to negative, positive to negative, and uh, the current will then choose to go through this path here, which is the path of least resistance, rather than the actual filament lamp. And uh, this means that the overall resistance in the circuit will decrease. So before, with the filament lamp, which was 5 ohms, the total resistance was 10 ohms, but now it will be just 5 ohms because this bulb will essentially not be part of the circuit anymore because the current will kind of do this and then back here again. So because the resistance will be lower, the current will be higher. So we can say for the first mark that the current increases. as the resistance in the circuit decreases. In the circuit decreases. Okay, next one. Describe how the potential difference across the resistor actually 
changes. So in this case, we will no longer have to share the PD and this means that the PD across the resistor will increase to 6 volts because essentially it will be the only thing in the circuit. So we can say, how are we going to word this? Let's say that the uh, PD increases and why is that? Because the voltage from the cell, was it from a cell or from a battery? Let's call it a battery. Is no longer split. between the lamp and the resistor. Okay, next part, state the potential difference across the lamp when the switch is closed. Okay, so as I said, when the switch is closed, the current is kind of going to go through here, meaning that it will not go through the filament lamp meaning that the potential difference across the lamp will be just zero volts. Okay, next question. So the figure shows a lamp connected to a DC power supply. So the power supply provides a potential difference of four and a half volts and the current in the lamp is 0.3 amps. Use the equation to figure out the resistance and they've even given us the equation. So R is V over I, so this means that this will be 4.5, which is the voltage, divided by the current, which is given to be 0.3. So all we need to do is put those into a calculator, 4.5 divided by 0.3, which is going to give me 15 ohms. Okay, calculate the power that has been supplied to the lamp. So probably the easiest way to calculate the power would be to use the fact the, that the equation for power is V times I. Okay, but we're just going to use this one. So the voltage was four and a half. The current is 0 0.30. If we multiply them together, we're going to uh, get, what is it? Was it 1.35, 1.35, because we're using um, two significant figures. I'm just going to round this up to 1.4 watts. Okay, so another identical lamp is added to the circuit as shown in figure four. The power supply provides the same potential difference as provided in the circuit in figure three. State and explain the difference between the brightness of the lamp in figure three and the brightness of the lamp in figure four. Okay, so I'm just going to give you guys a little analogy just to make it a little bit easier to understand. So before we had the DC power supply and uh, I'm just going to use this symbol here for a little cell. And if we have just one of these, one of these filament lamps in the circuit, excuse my drawing, but I'm just using a digital uh, pad. So let's say we had six volts. This means that the potential difference across one filament lamp will be 6 volts. But if we had 6 volts now, then this PD will have to be shared between two lamps. So the PD across this one will be 3 volts and the PD across this one will also be 3 volts. So additionally, the current would be a lot lower because the resistance will be a lot higher. Why is that? So let's say that this lamp here was, I don't know, let's call it 10 ohms. Well, the total resistance in the circuit is 10 ohms, which means the current will be voltage divided by resistance, where is that? 0.6. But here, the total resistance will be 20 ohms because this one is uh, 10 and this one here is 10 as well. Now, let's just write it up. So the first thing to note is that the lamp in figure four will be dimmer. Why is that? Well, the potential difference across the lamp will be lower and the current in the circuit will also be lower because the resistance is higher. 
Overall, those two things mean that less power is dissipated across each filament lamp. Why is that? Well, because power is Vi, and if the current is lower, if the voltage is lower, then the power will be lower as well. Okay, next one, a student is given a low voltage power supply, one meter of resistance wire. The student uses these and other pieces of equipment to measure the resistance of just 50 centimeters of the wire. Draw a circuit diagram of a circuit that the student should use. So this is the typical one. We kind of have a ruler and with a little wire on top. Sometimes we vary uh, the uh, length and then we measure the resistance. In this case is just 50 centimeters. So the ruler is kind of optional. But what is not optional is the power supply which in this case I've used a low power cell, then an ammeter in series, a voltmeter in parallel, and uh, I've used crocodile clips to connect the voltmeter anywhere I want along the uh, circuit with the resistance wire being across here. So if I wanted to measure it for 50 centimeters, I would place this crocodile clip at the 50 centimeter mark of the ruler. After we find the current and then the voltage, we'll just use the fact that resistance is the potential difference divided by the current. Okay, next one, which of these uh, symbols is correct for a thermistor? Now the correct answer is C. Let's use this opportunity to revise all the other ones. So this one here is a resistor with some light falling onto it. It's an LDR, which is a light dependent resistor and it varies its resistance based on light intensity. This here is a variable resistor and um, you can adjust its resistance based on what you want in the circuit. As we said, C here is the thermistor, the resistance of which changes with, based with temperatures we're about to see, and D is actually a diode. Okay, next one, a student investigate how the resistance of a thermistor varies with temperature, and we have a graph of this. Describe how the resistance of the thermistor varies with temperature. The first thing to note is that as temperature increases, the resistance goes down. So let's just write this as temperature increases, the resistance decreases. And this will be one of our marks. Now, this is not enough because we need to also say, how does it happen? If it's linear, it's a, if it's at a constant rate, this will be a straight line, but it's not. So we need to comment on that. We need to say that the line is kind of getting flatter, it's getting less steep. And the way we would scientifically write this is that the gradient is decreasing. Next one, draw the tangent of the curve at a temperature of 30 degrees to find the rate of change of resistance with a temperature of at 30 degrees C and we need to state the unit. Okay, so let's take you guys through the process of drawing a tangent. So we need to draw the tangent line at 30 degrees C. So we're going to take our ruler and then we're just going to mark a point somewhere here just above the 30 degrees mark. Then we're going to draw a tangent line, which is just about here. With my digital whiteboard, it may not be quite so perfect, but we're going to do our best. Now, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with this one. Let's see if it lets me draw it properly. And then straight after that, I'm going to want my gradient triangle to be, I would say, as big as possible. And then I'm going to take some readings. Okay, now that I've drawn the gradient, the line is, is a little bit thick, but you know, in the real exam with a pencil, it will be a little bit easier. Okay, so the gradient is equal to the change in y divided by change in x, rise over run. So how much does our y-axis change? Well, it's going to go from zero to, um, from six to zero. So our change will be negative and will be minus six. Our change in the 
x-axis of this entire tangent line, I'm not just looking at that point in particular, but just of the entire tangent line, um, is going to be uh, from 0 to this point here, which, uh, let's see what it is, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, between 60 and 70, so this means that each one of those squares will actually uh, represent 2. So if we were to go kind of uh, kind of close to uh, this one, uh, let's just call this one. If the line wasn't so thick, it would probably end there. So I'm going to call that 66. So 6 over 66. And if we put that into a calculator, we're going to get around 0 0.09. Uh, I'm just going to write this in this box here. It's asking us for the unit as well. Uh, there's often a trick with these questions, so let's just double check the units. Aha, uh -huh, and here's the trick. It's in kilo ohms on the uh, y-axis and in degree C on the x-axis. So the unit will be kilo ohms per uh, degree Celsius. Okay, guys, it's quite a long video, but I hope it's useful and I hope it helps you a lot to get at nine in GCSE physics. And you should really have a look at this next one just here with some more electricity problems that will help you do just that.